Good evening. Good evening. Please remain seated as we begin today's service with a reading of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a new heart, a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God, my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offering. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please stand. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and one another, and before the whole country of heaven, that we have sinned by our fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ's servant. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, and the hypocrisy and apathy that have affected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, God. Our negligence of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, God. Our false judgment, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbor, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, God. Our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who have come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, o Lord, for your mercy is great. A 
Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. If you wish to receive ashes, starting with this side, if you wish to proceed forward. Greg, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen. Rachel, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are to dust, you shall return. Go. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ does not desire the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live. Therefore, we implore God to grant us true repentance and the Holy Spirit that those things may please God, which we do this day, that the rest of our life may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to God's eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathe into us the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and exercises, and strengthen us in ways of our family. The mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Our first reading today is from the book of Joel, the second chapter. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their light has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents when punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, mm -hmm. a grain offering or a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify and fast. Call the solemn assembly and gather the people. Sanctify the congregation and assemble the aged. Gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword amongst nations. Why should it be said amongst peoples, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. Paul writes, So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, or made him to sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful spirit, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true as unknown, and yet are well known as dying. And see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of God, word of life. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. Beware of practice. 
practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal. Don't look like the hypocrites, in, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth Rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord. Please have a seat. From our reading today in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is setting the tone of our daily lives, as well as our tone for our length of service, observance here in today's world. Now Jesus speaks many times about how we are to live and sacrifice in his following. We are to live so people see the joy in our lives, being in the body of Christ, and to go joyfully out in the world and serve, but to let it show in how we act, or how we help others, not just because we say it. In Latin, we're called to examine our lives and prepare for the salvation and just the coming of salvation with Easter Day, just a few short weeks away. And tonight, with ashes on our foreheads, we're reminded how we are marked as Christians with the cross of Christ on our head. Isn't it amazing that the words from dust, remember that from dust you came, and to dust you shall return. How a blessing that is. That our, hope, our Heavenly Father loved us so much. So much that when after we were created, He created a way for us to go home. What a blessing that is to know that our God loves us so much that everything that we are collecting in our lives today pain, suffering, all that goes when we die to go home to the kingdom goes back in the ground where it came from. I find a joy in that, knowing that one day our struggle will end and it will be with our Father that will be. The cross that's on our forehead represents the cross that we received in water and oil and bed. It represents the blessing we may have received at our confirmation. Every Sunday we begin our worship service with that. And of course, at the end of our lives, the waters and oil that may be used to prepare someone to go to the kingdom eternal. We are to begin and all, end of all things remembering that Jesus on that cross in Jerusalem, the sacrificial lamb offered for us and our sins, for atonement to the Father 
is our guidepost in everything, everything that we do. That cross, in that cross, the promises of the Father follow us everywhere we go. Now today in Ash, we put a visible sign on our redemption and mission going out into the world. But do we need those ashes to remind others, to remind ourselves? Many times with services that are earlier in the day where they have received ashes upon their forehead, the common remark is, you, you didn't want your face. There's some three up there. Today they see it. But tonight, before you go to bed and wash those ashes away, look deeply in the mirror. See that you are marked as his always. For the cross that Jesus bore for us is not easily washed away with soap and water. Oh, we can deny it being there. But what he did cannot be removed. Denying it won't change how much God loves us. He died for us as a sacrifice, a sacrifice of his blood and his body, his giving everything at all so that we can be with him. That cross in your head should not surprise people. But because they don't see it tomorrow doesn't mean that you cannot show it there. Our lives and actions, our faith makes that cross visible when we look to others and serve them as our Lord has. They see the cross in your giving and sharing. They see the gift of eternal life in the contentedness we show as we are free to share that joy around us. When we act as Jesus acted and love as he did, unconditionally, holy, and willingly. Not just for a moment. Not just because we said it here. But always. We never needed the big show like the Pharisees. And we do not need to announce that we're saved or special or not of this world or suffering in his name. You do not need to announce how you give to support his ministry and help the lives of others through your giving. Nor pray large prayers to show that he is leading, leading your life. A simple prayer. Thank you, God. Will suffice. And if we live as Jesus tells us and teaches us to do, we don't need all these extra things. For those we surround in him with our lives in faith, in hope, in love. Don't need to see the cross. They already know it's there. Tonight, when you get a chance before you leave, look around. Tonight it's quite easy to see the mark of our Savior in your love. Let us go forth into the world and show his love and his cross. Not just every single day and to everyone everyone we love the world needs God they need Jesus they need the spirit be the messenger be the comfort be the change not, not for your own name, but for their sake Amen Amen Please stand for our end of the evening. It's number 601, Savior when in dust to you.
unity in Christ, as we say our Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, beyond not made, of one of being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended to heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we return to our baptism during this season of Lent, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Help us return to you with all our hearts. Give us the will and the words to pray. In the assembly of believers and in the privacy of our rooms, God of mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to treasure the earth you have made. Bring new life to rivers, oceans, and trees, and to all the animal species that are dying. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Now is the acceptable time for us to learn your way of peace. Plant peace in our hearts, in our homes, in every nation, that it might sprout and flourish. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant comfort and endurance to all those who suffer from hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, sleepless nights, or hunger. Bring healing to the sick and rest to the weary, especially for Paul Anderson, Linda Lamborn, Alex Nenham, Roger Alexis, Ron Spencer, Dave Mays, Connie Henry, Gigi Carroll, Todd Fisker, Mary Delaney, Patricia Walt, Doris Baker, Debbie Shirk, Holly Bernardi, Larry Shine, Gregory Buckner, Cindy Soley, Lois Schultz, Robbie Swin, Joyce Maxwell, Todd Erickson, Marlene Niowski, Steve Cavallaro, Lou Montai, Bishop Lozano, Lori Marcella, Betty Fraley, family and friends of Kim Little Robinson, Andy and Pam Roy, and anyone we name. Mary Lou, Sherry and Dave Sterner, Greg Fisher, John Wickett. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Strong hearts, but may they also 
but in both countries, those that are caught up in the war because of the attacking force, and those caught up in the war because they didn't have a choice. And with all the let us stand with the, with the church eternal and offer our love, our strength, and our support, and that your spirit may watch over and keep them safe. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, God of abundant grace, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And also peace with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany us on our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those or for pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all that when we find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Before we leave this evening, just as a reminder, the um, Latin servants Thou that my vision number seven ninety three. 